there's that much good business out there that there's no need to take on those clients that I think as soon as they either walk through the door or you go into their chart of accounts, you see that it's just a mess and they're probably going to be delayed and late, et cetera, et cetera. So, but again, take some time to work out what it is you want. Go back to chapter one of the book. It's not just the numbers to say, what is it? What sort of a business do you want to build? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the latest episode of Strategy in the Virtual Controller. Our podcast is designed to talk all things accounting, bookkeeping, technology, a little bit of AI thrown in there because we may as well, seems to be the the hottest topic at the moment. But my name's Damien Greathead and I'm sitting in a bit of a a dull and dreary Sydney, Australia at the moment. My co-host, Penny Breslin, you look like you're on an Arctic tundra, but whereabouts are you today? That's actually January in Death Valley. But... (laughs) My hair's wet because I just got out of the ocean here in San Diego because it was with some nice little supping water there, you know, flat, oh, flat water, so did a little supping. And so it's still wet. Had to get all that salt out of it. So it's nice and beautiful and sunny here as usual in San Diego. Wonderful. And a bit of a break between episodes. And Penny, you were traveling, which we'll get to last time we were scheduled uh, for our podcast recording. I had a toddler tantrum. So Gus is, he just hit two and he's discovering his emotions. And his go-to emotion is to literally crumble into a ball and lie on the ground screaming. So yeah, unfortunately we didn't record that last one, but I was up at 5am this morning and we went for a good walk today. And We'll see how the rest of the day goes. But Penny, you, you got off to a conference. You know, the day that you, you had to skip because of it and I was waiting for you, I had to do it quick. And the reason I had to cut off is I had a toddler here and she was having a tantrum. <laughs> so you know what? It doesn't change much. And she's four. <laughs> and she's, so, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Penny, you were at a conference as well. I think the Trimera, what was that one? Yeah, Trimera, Unique CPA, Digital CPA. It had kind of a multitude of names. Again, Don Brolin and Scott Carano knocked it out of the park with their presentations. And Scott is just like brilliant with that music and everything. Very good. One of the things is the panel discussions that the way they were presented. It's funny. It was interesting how different people handle being a master of ceremonies at a panel discussion. There are definitely some good things that some people did that were better than others. I wouldn't say everybody, nobody was bad, but some had some better ways of handling that. But the questions were excellent. There was an upbeat sense. It was all about staying healthy. There was a lot of emphasis on obviously what's going on in AI, but it was majority of how do you take care of yourself during this time? So that was pretty good. The presenters were all good. I would say it was two days of fun interesting Mm -hmm. conversations and uh, good learning opportunities. Yeah, nice. I mean, it was sort of late August with probably a bit of a difficult time for some accountants. How's the first, like where we are in September? Yeah, it was right at the end of August. So it wasn't that bad. It was before this, it was before Labor Day here Mm. in the United States. So right now, you know, it's kind of like Crunch, 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 crunch. Yeah, yeah. In fact, How's the I was having thing? back-to-back meetings and missed a meeting. And <laughs> they said, okay, we'll just move it till after the 15th because I'm sure you're as busy as we are. And, mm-hmm. and this morning it was going, I had two Zooms going on. And I, you know, I go, okay, I'm going to jump into this one for five minutes and I'll jump over to that one for five minutes. And so, you know, a lot of, it's it's a hectic time of year. You know, a lot of tax work that we're doing, plus all balance work and getting stuff cleaned up. There's a lot of conversions going on still. Yeah. What's your extension season like? Did you have a lot on or have you been working on a lot of extensions? Oh god, we yeah, we had yeah, we had one client who just said on August 15th, they said, This is a view of what we expect to get done between now and October 15th. And I went, Wow. <laughs> what have you been doing? <laughs> and I went, Wow, you really think we're gonna be able to do this? He goes, Yeah, you guys can do it. And yeah. The, oh, you the, guys, you guys could do it. <laughs> yeah, you guys could do it. And so we're, uh, yeah, the pragati is like, I go, Jesus, girl, do you ever go home? Like, now nah, she does. She does. Like last night, everybody had to leave early because of a big festival. And it's the woman's job to get all the food and flowers mm. and everything prepared. So, yeah, and a lot of complicated high net worth ones that we're doing with K1s and K1 seemed to have gone out very late with a lot of businesses. <laughs> I don't know why. 
with one company that was brand new. And I don't fault them for this because they're not a CPA firm. They're mm-hmm. a wealth management company that has started a CPA division. So it's kind of like the reverse right. of what we're yep. used to. And a bunch of CPAs who do tax, but have never worked together, nor have they ever outsourced. And so we were able to go in and fix their workflow because, again, they were saying, we don't like the workflow. I said, why? Because it looks like a wall to you. Yeah, okay. We're going to set statuses and stuff using the old Barry McQuarrie and Mark Albrecht method of uh, fixing those statuses. And then doing it for the first two days and my team coming back going, you know, we could do two extra more tax returns a night if they would just organize their documents differently. Hmm. And so we had a Zoom meeting, we fixed it. So we moved from that particular team doing uh, two extra returns a night and uh, it paid off for us. (laughs) Interesting (laughs) business model though. So they're CPAs. So did they do tax way back when and then they decided to go off and do financial management, like financial planning? No, this was a financial management company that are uh, brought in they hired because their clients are asking them can you do our tax returns because our cpa we've got a shitty restored. experience with our cpa ah wow yep and you know it's people have an expectation different these days about how they're going to communicate with their financial advisors yeah. planners team, that whole team, team. yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's interesting. Uh, no, I'll, I'll just one story. I've, I know a firm and it is accountants and financial planners and that's, and they've been doing that for 10 years, longer than that. But there is such a frustration from the financial planning side because the tax experience is so different to the financial planning side. And the clients are there going like, it's the same name on the door. Why can't you get your shit together across both divisions? And yeah, just really interesting that even in the same firm, let alone referral arrangements, there's that disconnect. So it's sort of interesting that financial planning firms saying, well, why don't we take on the tax side and let's see if we can build it and partner with experts. Yeah. And then the first thing this CPA said, okay, go find an outsourcer to do the prep work. Yeah. So they do have an ongoing constant communication with the client because we're in the background taking care of all the other stuff. And I had the same thing happen with some bookkeeping firms that come to us and all they do is bookkeeping and they'll go, so do you know anybody who can do the taxes for our clients? And, you know, I have to be careful on who I recommend because I've got to make sure that they have the same value set on communication and communication technology service yeah yeah a, a yeah whole, i mean because it's a different space isn't it? it's a totally different space and whether it's the tax preparer giving a client over to the bookkeeper then you're going to want that bookkeeper <laughs> to do it your way or if it's the bookkeeping firm giving it over to a tax firm hey we're doing cast types cfo level work and we have all this constant contact. Our clients are used to, you know, people responding. Yeah. I, I, was just think, I was just thinking if you're working with a bookkeeping sort of cat CFO type controllership service that we've been talking about, and you go on paperless, you go on digital, you're using apps and all that type of stuff, and you get this referral for a, a tax person, and then all of a sudden a paper organizer shows up sort of in the mail in mid-January, you'd just be like, what, what match just your happened? expectations, yeah. yeah. Did I just step back in time? <laughs> well, you know, the way I found this mistake was by doing recommendations. And one of them, mm. to my daughter, and she called me and said, he doesn't respond to emails. He doesn't return calls. He doesn't return texts. Yeah. And when I call up anybody in his office, if I'm lucky to get anybody, they don't know who I am. And it's been a couple of months. I had the same experience. And so the Australian individual tax deadline, I think, is October 31st. And given what I do, I was out on a roadshow and met an accountant who has US experience, Australian experience. So I thought, okay, th- this would work well. And literally crickets. And, and really, he said, yep, we can do that. We can do that. Some semi-okay communication early on, but ever since crickets. And so now I'm like, shit, got to find another accountant to help on that. I know. And it's so I think, you know, just like when you interview your client, if you're going to have this kind of a relationship, it's an opportunity 
for two different parts of this whole community of, of handling small business accounting and high net worth individuals, which is primarily what we talk about doing it, it's a good way for you to, to expand you, yourself without having to actually physically expand yourself. Mm. There's a lot of tax accountants who just don't want to deal with that bookkeeping stuff. And there's certainly a lot of bookkeepers and, and CPA bookkeepers who just don't want to do tax anymore. But and you do have to be on that same level, don't you? Yes. You've got to, you have it, to be on an not, equal level. How do yeah. you communicate with your client? What do you use? Let me know how you do your stuff. Because if you don't do it the way I do it, then I don't want to. If we're not using the same tool set, the, the same tech stack. If, you, or if you're a bookkeeper stack. who says, I don't care how the chart of accounts look. I don't give a damn. You know, I'm, as a tax preparer, I'm just going to go, no, yeah. I want to work with you. Right. Or if I'm a bookkeeper and I have really good communication with my client, I'm using an interactive workflow app like Carbon or a financial sense that allows a client to come in and give me information. And then my tax preparer, like you said, gives me a paper organizer or doesn't answer the phone, doesn't answer email, doesn't answer a text message. Or if, if you ask the question of like, what are the service level agreements you, you've agreed with your clients? And they're like, service level agreements? agreements. What's, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> you got to get on, you got to be on the same page. And so when people ask me to recommend, it's kind of like, oh, wow. Because, mm -hmm. you know. It's, yeah, interesting. Whereas before. It's hard, it probably, it's hard to yeah. recommend you guys unless you, you, you know. You know, with it. I will say the people at the digital CPA, the unique CPA, Trimerit, they were all pretty much had their shit together. A little bit further along that. A little bit um, further along that food path, yeah. Yeah, but I think, I also think you're sort of in this quite awkward position because... <laughs> because you know exactly how these firms operate. Like you've seen under the hood, so to speak, and you know the challenges that they have. But I, yeah, again, I think if you're sort of sitting down and you, you're approaching your September 15, October 15 deadline and thinking, oh, hang on, there's got to be a better way. Holy, like it's such an amazing time because you've got FaceTime with your clients. You're coming into year end. I don't know, like identify 10 clients that uh, that you think there's an opportunity with and have a chat with them. There's so many things that you could be helping them with. So rather than sort of chasing that another tax return, yeah, identify 10 clients that you want to talk to something about. Like Don't tax see credits. accountants chasing tax returns anymore. Well, no, but, but maybe not chasing, but maybe taking them on. So yeah, That you want to work with. Or yeah, but they're taking on ones that they shouldn't be taking on because it's sort of their natural thing that they do. They just say yes when someone comes in for a tax return versus actually, well, hang on, do I need this tax return? And if I do this tax return, does it actually take me away from one of my top 10 clients or one of my top 20 clients or where there's much more opportunity for me? So I, I don't know. I think that's Which yeah, you exactly people, what happened to me the other day for a client. You did, now, did you say no or did you, did you say yes? No, I said, call me when you're ready. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, and this has been going on for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. You keep on calling. We're going to do this. Like, hey, let me know when. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. We're still doing our shit. You know, when you have it together, let me know. But in the meantime, you know, I got to get on this other call. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. With somebody that I know is doing it, doing it right enough so that I could go out and suck today. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know that. Yeah. I, I think there's that much good business out there that there's no need to take on those clients that I think as soon as they either walk through the door or you go into their chart of accounts, you see that it's just a, a mess and they're probably going to be delayed and late, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I, again, you know, take some time to work out what it is you want. Go back to chapter one of the book. It's not just the numbers to say, what is it? What sort of a business do you want to build? And I think really interesting can, i think you know one of the things we wanted to talk about was marketing and i think that you can use this to grow your business by having relationships with somebody who might be considered a competitor but really isn't thomas freeman wrote an article in the wall street journal about this years ago about how companies that could be competitors in some areas work together well in other areas within their businesses and why not i mean you know Personally, I would find it and I do find it difficult. And I'm, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the draw and I'm not a whiz bang CPA, you know, with all those degrees behind me. But 
I look at what it takes to be connected with a client at the level of being involved in their monthly books. And Mm -hmm. when my daughter was here with her four-year-old who was having meltdown, I had a client that called that same day earlier who had meltdown. And that client would be the equivalent of what that your two-year-old son Gus was doing or my four-year-old granddaughter Ember was doing. She was having a meltdown. And after I got done talking to her, I walked out of the study and my daughter goes, so you're a psychologist too. And, (laughs) you know, you can only handle so much of that. Yeah. Right. So if you could just take off and find somebody who wants to handle a specific part of that business, be it the tax side versus the bookkeeping side, and you don't have to have the same company, but you could have a mutual relationship that benefits the both of you. And it's called centers of influence years ago. You know, you know, an insurance agent, you know, a banker, you know, a bookkeeper, you know, a tax person. Um, it's a great way to do marketing without putting a lot of money into it. But you do have to put a lot of agreements on in line. And I think you have to make sure that the person you made this agreement with is on the same boat that you're driving. Yeah. you. Know, I, I thought it was like that co-op petition or something that in theory on paper, it looks like your competitors, but actually you're collaborating for the betterment of the the mutual client or the client. I think that is the one thing. There's been so many times where I've heard of, yeah, I referred them to that financial planner and, and then they left me for another accountant. And I'm like, well, it's probably on you rather than on the financial planner or on the bookkeeper or whatever. I, I would hazard a guess that the financial planner or the bookkeeper or the bookkeeping firm delivered a, a different level of service. And so that's probably the prompt. Do you see Penny like referral fees or because I think that's oh, that, also... that was an interesting conversation because that's come up too. And, you know, it's a combination of a few things. Some people go, well, just take good care of my clients. I tend to do that, <laughs> but I figure I'm doing the work anyways, and I'm probably going to do the tax. My team's going to do the bookkeeping and the tax prep. So I'm okay, but I've seen both where okay, I'm going to refer, I'm a bookkeeper and I'm going to refer tax clients to you. You're a tax preparer. You can refer clients to me that need bookkeeping help. That's one. Mm. And the other one is, you know, getting paid for the referral. A bookkeeper can get paid for the referral. But the one thing you don't want to have happen, which does happen, is you don't want to lose the client because the other person that you have a relationship with doesn't meet the expectations of the client or the work is bad. And I have a firm that outsources accounting to us, but I also know they do taxes. And so sometimes when somebody will come to me and go, do you clean up our books? And now do you know a tax accountant? And uh, I'll call her and she'll go, did your team do the books? And I go, yeah, we follow what you wanted. So she goes, okay, I'll take them. <laughs> I'll take them. <laughs> you know, if, we, if I'm going to recommend something to her, I know what she's expecting. So I give it her, to her that way. I don't make it difficult for her, you know? And it's interesting about this idea of paying, paying a referral fee, like, or asking for a referral fee, like, well, I'll just take care of your client. I'm like, no, no, you pay me. So there's a bit more skin in the game in terms of if I've got to pay you for the referral, then I'm going to work hard to make that relationship work. So I think there is. And when do you get, when do you get paid? That's a good, that's the other question. Do you pay them at the moment they referred the business for a tax? Or do you pay that bookkeeping firm the day you collect on the tax payment? Oh, I think um, th- if I was the bookkeeper, I'd pay immediately as soon as the. <laughs> I don't know. And if I'm a CPA, I probably wouldn't agree to that. You know how they are. Sorry. No, no, no. But I think in doing that, it does force the conversation around service levels and client expectations and making sure and I think as well rather than there being sort of ambiguity about how oh yeah because we're a client-centric firm because we're I think it forces the conversation and okay so your client-centric firm what does that mean like what are your response times and how do you communicate and what tools do you use to communicate with your clients I think it forces the conversation and so again rather than this sort of loose handshake of I'll take care of your client like no no you're going to pay me for the client you're going to pay me but obviously you'll then get paid upon delivery of of your services so I don't know I think it It forces a conversation it could be mutually beneficial but it has to be transparent you have to be aware and that's why I'm hesitant sometimes too because especially see that 
what you say you do and what's on your website you do, yeah. isn't necessarily what you're doing in the background. <laughs> There's a difference between the say and do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think the other side of it is you are coming into uh, hopefully their September 15, October 15 deadlines aren't as crazy as they have been in previous years, but I, I would hazard a guess they are. I think that what I find is accountants, especially when it comes to taxes, they're very, very good at saying, look, if you don't have the stuff into me by now, it's going on automatic extension. They don't have time to mess around. What and, do you mean automatic um, extension for September 15 and October 15? Oh, for September it? 15, October 15. No, no. You're no. screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, coming in into the tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're doing now is all those extensions. My tax team has never stopped working, except well, I, in that, August. In August, they had a very light month. But that's what I was thinking as well. Is like you will have FaceTime with clients that have been on extension. So what are you going to do with them? Are you going to say, right, we've got to get our shit together now, or do you actually just say? Why don't we just put you straight onto extension and then put steps in place now so that you know that you're going on extension because of X, Y, and Z, your K1s are late or, or whatever, but use the, the FaceTime that you have with clients around tax to, to set yourself up for success next year. And actually setting yourself up for success might just be, you know, why don't we just put you on extension straight away and then we can triage you appropriately. So rather than us bugging you in January, February, March, we'll start bugging you in May, June, July. I I don't know. I I think, yeah. I agree. I mean, when my daughter asked me, she goes, shouldn't we be filed by now? And I go, well, you know, he's probably thinking they're on extension anyway. So he'll just wait until the day she goes, why would you do that? Why would you make us wait that long? And I go, yeah, I agree. Why would he? But but he's got, but, but as he's said, got all the information, has had it for months. They and as you hold- said, your firm didn't stop doing tax returns. So it is that thing that you say, like, you know what? We're going to plan at load level our work. And Penny, it's October 15. You've collected your tax return. Just letting you know, we're going to put you on extension automatically. And then come May, that's when I'm going to start that's when I'm going to sh- schedule you for the return. So that gives you plenty of time to get everything together. The K one. Don't wait until don't wait till September and October yeah. to do the filing. Yeah. If the, the company or the person has all this stuff into you, yeah. Is there a rule that you can't file a tax return in June? I think it's just maybe that adrenaline rush of of you know enjoying summer and then September first clicks over. Not at that point, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but actually, sort of, you know, one of the things that we have been talking about is the people challenge. I'm seeing a lot more articles about the people challenge, not that it ever went away, but if there's one reason for you to do your tax returns in June rather than September or October, it's to keep your people, to not put them through these crazy, these I'll crazy love periods. All this stuff out. And you know what? If I was a young CPA and or a, a CPA in a firm where I'm sort of like, okay, do I go to be a partner in this firm? Or actually that financial management, financial planning firm starting a tax division, why don't I go over there? Like, because again, this whole, there's Our different business models five. out there. You know, it's funny you would bring this up because I had a conversation. I know we're going long. I had a conversation with a real old school accounting firm. You know, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't our mutual. <laughs> wasn't my old boss, was it? <laughs> No, 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 no. But your old boss works with them. And he was saying, you know, because I had been telling him, I, you know, that some of the people that they have working for him, oh, well, no, they've been working for me for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what he has found now that he's hired new people is that he goes, I look up and I don't say anything, but in my head, I'm thinking it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Why are you leaving? And what I, he said I've discovered about these younger kids is one, they share information easily. They do not close. They don't go in and close their doors and not talk to other people in the office. They're constantly learning from each other. Two, they recognize that nobody died because they did not stay late and finish some reconciliation or some document. Three, they have a life or they're happier. And he goes, and you know what? So am I now. And you know what? They're, they have no qualms about sharing how much money they make. They have no qualms sharing, sort of having a look at, wait, we're charging them how much for doing what? Or there's no way we're charging them enough for what we do. Like, And there's no filter, which I think is... <laughs> They're like all like me. 
<laughs> but you know, and it was hilarious because you know, for years this guy's like, he goes, you know, my old employees, they learned how to do something one way and they kept it to themselves how they did it, and they didn't understand why anybody would want to change. Mm. And he goes, it wasn't that the client didn't want to change. I said, yeah, it was that they didn't want to change. And I yeah, said, yeah. do you really want to surround yourself with people who want to sit in the cave and look at the wall? And, you know, I love, oh, my client will never do that. My client oh, couldn't do that. My client won't do that. I think your yeah, client and he's, is got, like, he's hired these new out. kids and they're like, well, if the client won't do it, we just won't do it. Period. Yeah. And and the goes, I've gotten well, rid of clients I never should have had in the first place. He goes, life is so much better. Or <laughs> and the people working for me are happy. <laughs> or alternatively, we went out and talked to the client and the client was like, oh shit, that's awesome. How, how do I, yes, yes, yes. Like help me be better in the back office and all that type of stuff. And I think, and I don't know about the tri Merit. I attended a conference recently and the demographic, the age, what I found was significantly younger than like the average age and the view and you know maybe all the partners were at home yeah, or something like that somebody but, said i'm the oldest person in this room and he was up on them and i'm thinking no you're not not yet <laughs> <laughs> and no it's a very young very enthusiastic very happy because they're not gonna do the old way and i think and they're gonna know, choose to be healthy and that was what the whole thing was about there's been a lot of there has been a lot of talk in the news and different podcasts and different about the industry. The profession has a brand image problem. What I think is really interesting, though, is that those young people coming into traditional accounting firms. I think it is an amazing time to be in accounting, and I think it's actually a really like to be starting an accounting firm. And I don't think they're necessarily going to run to corporate which I think is probably what happened. I don't think they're necessarily going to run to tech startups because we've seen a bit of volatility in that. But actually, if I'm an accountant with a couple of years experience under my belt, I'm talking to my peers, I'm talking to people, I'm starting my own accounting firm because it's a good business to be in and there's a really good way to do it. So and, and, I don't know. And I, it, yeah, and the startup is not that heavy. Because of the cloud apps. Yeah, 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 um, exactly. That those traditional costs, they're not there yeah. anymore. And you know what? I can be working in, I can be working my nine to five, Monday to Friday, and just start on the side. And then or if you want to work midnight to two o'clock in the morning because you're a night bird, you can. Or if you want to be the face and partner with Money Penny and to get the work done and, and all that type of stuff, you could build a nice little business and, and not do a lot of the actual technical work but be the rainmaker be the face and partner with someone like you penny to get the work done well yeah there's a lot of that going on around <laughs> all over the place every but, but, but I, country <laughs> but i think the point is that there's the, the traditional business model of an accounting firm i won't say it's dead but I, i'd say that like there's so many different ways in which you can build grow an accounting firm well, isn't it the traditional business model of small businesses in the United States in North America, and I'm sure in Europe too, hasn't that changed? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. if the traditional business model has changed for all the businesses we service, why haven't we? What the hell makes us think it can't change here? Oh, Penny, I think that's a really good place to leave today's episode on that final thought. <laughs> But I, no, I thought, well, good to be back. I thought that was, yeah, fascinating. Again, I think it's to do really... marketing. We never get around to marketing. But the thing never is... To That's not true, Penny, because we everything has been about growing your practice, which is what marketing is all about. And being, you know, marketing is very much uh, as well about being very clear on what it is you do, who you serve, what's your value proposition. And I think the last... 40 minutes or however long we've been yammering on for has been very focused on bringing clarity to that because yeah, you can go and do keywords, you can go and do paid search, you can go and do social and all that type of stuff. And you can go do email marketing, but if you actually don't have any, if you're not clear on that value proposition, who you're servicing, et cetera, it's just going to go, you're spraying it against a wall and hoping for the best. So we have talked about marketing. 
Okay, good. I'm glad anyway. you brought clarity to it because I brought it all back. I felt so like I circle. was all over the damn place. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, just to make sure that we don't go off on another tangent or, or segue, let's wrap it up there, Penny. Fantastic episode. Great to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed today's episode, leave us a review, share us on your social media so that you can help us grow the message of building that accounting firm that you want to build. There's so many different ways in which you can do it. And if there's anything that you would like help with or a sound board, please don't hesitate to reach out. Penny, your website is? PennyLLC.com and yours is? Uh, I don't have a website, so you'll just find me on LinkedIn. So there's not too many Damien Greatheads on LinkedIn. So find me on LinkedIn and you can find Penny on on LinkedIn as well. But yeah, MoneyPennyLLC.com to learn more about the services that Penny provides. And next week, next time we're interviewing a cybersecurity expert in the accounting industry. I know we're so sick of ourselves where we're going to bring some we're guests. We're going to bring on, a few so. people in and looking forward to that because it's a sticky wicket out there. It sure is. So Penny, thank you very much. Have a wonderful afternoon and we'll talk next time. Have a great day in Sydney. All right. Bye.